Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback and let's get started. Now, if you do have an exponential equation, uh, there are two expressions with different bases, 16 and 5, and we're supposed to solve for x and we're looking for real solutions. Okay, cool. Now, you probably observed when you saw this problem that we can kind of test some values, right? I mean, there's a way to figure it out if there's an integer or rational solution. For example, I replace x with one, it doesn't work because I get one times five. How can I get 100? You can also think about it that way, you know, from 16 and five. Well, 16 times five is 80, 16, 16 times 25 is 400. Oh, that might be a good clue. 4 times 25 is 100, but how can I get 4 from 16? I can square root it. How can I get 25? I can use x equals 2. So suppose x equals 2. Then what happens? You get 16 to the power 2 minus 1 over 2, multiplied by 5 to the second power. 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 half. So this becomes 16 to the power 1 half, multiplied by 5 to the second. And this is square root of 16, as you know, multiply by 25, and that is 4 times 25, and it is equal to 100. Awesome. But we're not trying to guess and check here, obviously, because that's not a good... I mean, it is a way to solve some equations. At least you get a solution, and then you can hopefully go from there. But we're going to actually solve this problem algebraically. Okay, but we do know that x equals 2 is a solution. So here's the million-dollar question. Are there any other solutions, or is this the only solution? What do you think? At this point, you may pause the video and kind of think about it and then continue. All right, anyways, let's continue. So here's what I'm gonna do. Since we have some variables in the exponents, I'm going to be logging both sides. It's a good method. If you have exponential equations, you can actually pretty much log both sides all the time, right? That wouldn't hurt. So I'm gonna log 16 to the power x minus one over x, multiply by five to the power x. Okay, this product. And then on the right hand side, I have 100, so I'm going to log that. And by the way, when I don't write the log, I think that there's been some discussion about this, like, does this mean the natural logarithm base e and so on and so forth? No, when I write log here and pretty much all the videos, I mean base 10. So we're working base 10 because we are using the decimal system uh, and we're going to be using log for log base 10. Okay, cool. I wanted to make that clear firsthand. Now, once you and the good thing about logging a power of 10 is because it's in decimal, it's going to be an integer. Okay, cool. Now, on the left-hand side, we do have a product. As you know, we have some product rules with logs. Maybe this might be another uh, video for a lecture note. I'm planning to do some videos on logarithms, complex numbers, trigonometry, you know, some algebra concepts, so on and so forth. They're going to come up too, but I think we'll, we're going to go look at it in detail later. But the idea here is we, if you have a product like log a times b, you can basically write it as log a plus log b. And you can prove this easily using the definition of logs, you know, using the exponential equations. Cool. So that means I can split it up. And that's what is really good about logs that if you have a really like giant product and you want to break it down, you can log it and then that'll just break it down. Okay. Sometimes we use this strategy uh, for integrals as well. Cool. Now, let's go ahead and separate these two things then. Uh, we're going to be getting log of 16 to the power x minus 1 over x plus, don't forget that the product turns into a sum, log of 5 to the power x. Again, the base is 10 here. I'm not writing it, but it's 10. Okay, cool. What is log 100 in base 10? Well, it means that you have, you're looking for a number, um, uh, 10 to the power, that number needs to be 100, so that number is 2. In other words, 10 to the power, what number equals 100? That's the answer, so that would be a 2. In other words, it's the number of zeros. That's what's cool about base 10, is that if you have a power of 10, you only need to look at the number of zeros. Nice. Okay, so log of 1 million would be 6, because 1 million has 6 zeros. Okay, cool. Now, what are we going to do? Oh, by the way, this just popped up because I think I had shared this <laughs> as a tweet, and I didn't realize that it was here, but it's cool. It's a really nice um, equation. And sometimes people ask like, does this always work? 
No, it doesn't. It only works for some numbers. But anyways, it just popped up there randomly. So it wasn't intentional. So once you do this, you get two different expressions, right? They're separated. Nice. Uh, now we're going to use the power rule. What is the power rule? If you have log of a to the power n, this n here, you can bring it to the front and it just becomes a coefficient or a multiplier or whatever you want to call it. So that's what's nice about it. Like if you have an exponential expression, you log it, you have uh, no longer uh, exponents. Cool. So I can go ahead and bring down the x minus 1 over x here. And then this is going to be log 16. And then I can bring the x down. And that's going to be log 5. And the whole thing is equal to 2. Nothing happens on the right hand side because we already have an integer. It's all good. Now we're going to be focusing on the left hand side because that's where the variables are. So you might be thinking, oh, isn't this equation easy to uh, solve because it looks kind of linear maybe? No, it's kind of rational here because we have a rational expression. But not only that, it's actually more complicated than that. But it's going to unfold and it's going to be real cool when we do that. How do we simplify this uh, as much as possible? First of all, think about this like log 16 and log 5. Are they related? Well, 16 and 5 don't seem to be related, but I don't want to keep it as 16, right? Okay, maybe we can do the things in different order, but this is what I'd like to do first. It kind of bugs me that I don't want to have any denominators. Well, can x be 0? Is x equal 0 a solution? Let's check. In the original problem, if you replace x with 0, it's undefined. Wow, okay, it just collapses. So it's not going to work. So that means that x does not equal 0, which means I can multiply both sides by x, which is cool, because I really, really want to get rid of the um, denominator here, okay? So I'm going to multiply everything by x. Notice that this brings an x squared, which is interesting, right? Well, you know what this means? This means that you're not going to have a linear or rational equation, but you're going to have a quadratic equation. Beautiful. Okay, but we still have to associate log 16 and log 5. But I don't want to leave the log 16 as log 16 because let's just ignore this little 5, 12 here. Uh, I'm going to write it as log 2 to the fourth power because that's definitely going to help us and 2 and 5 are kind of related and remember our base is 10 so it should be good now this and don't don't make no mistakes this x squared the 2 power 2 is not going to be moved because it's already a polynomial and it's all good we only do it for logs so don't over uh, simplify okay but this 4 can definitely be moved because that's the exponent of a log something so I can move it to the front. That's going to be 4x minus 4 multiplied by log 2 plus uh, x squared times log 5 for now, I guess, until we simplify this, is equal to 2x. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to associate log 5 and log 2. And how am I going to do that? Well, here's one thing you need to remember. Log 10 is equal to 1, correct? Because we're working in base 10. So log 10 is equal to 1, but I can write the log 10 as log 5 times 2 is equal to 1. And then by using the product rule, I can separate these. Log 5 plus log 2 is equal to 1. So in other words, log 5 and log 2 are two quantities whose sum equals 1. That's nice. Which means that I can write 1 in terms of the other. So I can write log 5 as 1 minus log 2. Beautiful. That's what I'm going to use here. So let's continue. 4x minus 4 times log 2 plus x squared multiplied by log 5, which can be written as 1 minus log 2 is equal to 2x. I still have 2x on the right-hand side. That's okay. Now we're going to put everything on the same side and we're going to distribute. And let's see what happens from here. One thing to keep in mind, though, when you're distributing, you don't want to distribute the x squared because we want to have a quadratic. So here's the goal. We want to make it a quadratic in x, so we want to get the coefficient of x squared, we want to get the coefficient of x, and we want to get the constant term. Anything that doesn't have an x in it is considered a constant term. So it makes sense if we don't distribute the coefficient of x squared. All right, so let's put that first. And then the next part is going to be distributed because this is going to give me 4x log 2 minus 4 log 2. The difference between these two terms is one of them is a variable, the other one is a constant. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 2x. And this also brings an extra x uh, to the equation, so that now I have to consider these two things together because that's going to give me the coefficient of x. Make sense? So there are some tricks along the way which we have to take care of, but the x squared part 
is going to be unchanged. Okay? Okay? That is the x squared. And then, now what is the coefficient of x? This is the question you need to ask. So the coefficient of x is 4 log 2 minus 2. Okay, cool. That's the quantity multiplied by x. And my constant term is going to be negative 4 log 2. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Now, this is a quadratic, right? Hopefully, you agree with that. This is a quadratic in x, and we're going to solve. And remember that log 2 is a number, okay? There's a value to it, which you can't exactly calculate, but you can use series, you can use a calculator, you can use so many different things, and you can approximate it. But that doesn't matter. We're going to find our answers in terms of log 2. So that's cool. Now, let's go ahead and write down the quadratic formula. But always remember that one of the solutions was x equals we at the beginning we kind of tested out right x equals 2 and it works so it, it might be helpful to remember that x equals 2 is a solution okay let's go ahead and write down the quadratic formula x equals negative b so i'm going to negate this so I'll just flip flip the terms plus minus the square root of b squared b squared minus 4ac when you do 4ac it's probably better if you multiply by c first that's going to give us 4 c is going to give us positive 16 log 2, then multiply by a, which is 1 minus log 2, okay, all over 2 times this quantity, which is 2 minus 2 log 2, cool. So those are the answers. I can leave it at that, but I really want to simplify it. And remember, one of the solutions is supposed to be x equals 2. So where is x equals 2, right? Is it hidden here? Let's find out. Okay, how can I simplify this? You know, I'd like to take the discriminant part and simplify as much as possible and then go back and substitute because I don't want to keep writing this every time, you know. It's just going to be too much writing and it's going to be a waste of time. So let's go ahead and expand this. Inside the radical, I have the discriminant, so that's going to be... And by the way, it will be helpful if you use substitution here. So I'm going to go ahead and call this log 2u. So I have, inside the radical, I have 4u minus 2 squared plus 16u times 1 minus u. Awesome. Let's go ahead and simplify the discriminant. This is going to be 16u squared minus 16u plus 4, right? Plus 16u minus 16u squared. Now, something interesting happens when you're trying to find a discriminant here because the 16u squared cancels out and the 16u cancels out, leaving you with a really nice expression Beautiful. So that means that this is actually real simple to solve. I can write it as x equals 2 minus 4 log 2 plus square root of 4, which is 2, divided by 2 minus 2 log 2. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This is going to give me 4 minus 4 log 2 divided by 2 minus 2 log 2. And if you factor out a 4 here, you get 1 minus log 2. Maybe I shouldn't distribute that in the first place, but it doesn't matter. Same thing. I know some people are going to take out a 2. That's the same. C cross these out, and you end up with x equals 2. Beautiful. So it just verified that x equals 2 is a solution. We knew that. But what is the other solution? It's going to come from the other one. All right, cool. It's going to be x equals 2 minus 4 log 2 minus... Remember, we have the plus minus, so now we're doing the minus, divided by 2 minus 2 log 2. And now if you simplify this, the 2s are going to cancel out. You're going to be getting something like negative 4 log 2 divided by 2 minus 2 log 2. Now, I don't want to leave a negative there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by negative 1. And you know that if you have a difference and multiply it by negative 1, you're negating it basically by flipping the terms or switching the terms. So to keep a long story short, x can be written as 4 log 2 divided by 2 log 2 minus 2. So that's one of the solutions. And we also know that x equals 2 is another solution. Okay, so those are all the solutions basically. And this brings us to the end of this video. And I just want to say one thing before we finish. Could you do this a little differently if you knew that x equals 2 is a solution? I want you to think about it. Yes, there's a way to do it. You Please comment. Write them down in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. But using Vieta's formulas, there's actually another way to approach this problem, 
which uh, I will share with you later. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you tomorrow with another video, which is going to be a geometry puzzle. Yay.